Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This seminar was delivered this morning on the request of the Department of Metallurgy in one of the universities in Indonesia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This slide shows uh, my name in there, my contact numbers, my YouTube channel, my website, as well as the title of the, of the seminar. It was Corrosion as a Career for Undergraduate Students. This slide shows uh, my qualifications and experience. I obtained a PhD degree in Korean Science and Korean Engineering in 1975 from UMIST, which was a part of the University of Manchester. After that, I have spent all my life in research, in academic, industrial, and in consultancy. This slide shows about the extent of corrosion. Corrosion is everywhere, like air. As living being thrive with oxygen, so does corrosion. Corrosion is a multidisciplinary subject as its roots in mainly metallurgy, material, metallic material, non-metal, engineering and non-engineering materials. In terms of science in chemistry, electrochemistry, microbiology, as well as in physics. From engineering point of view, it has roots in chemical, mechanical, electrical, civil. And computer applications because no softwares are being prepared right on computers and every growing engineer needs to know the computer applications and how to use the software growing experience by all materials and all sectors from domestic to advanced industries historically corrosion has been a focus of study for scientists and engineers for 150 plus years as a focus of study in is further enlarging, right? So does the extent of the corrosion and its understanding is enlarging. This slide shows the impacts of corrosion. This slide is taken from the research opportunities in corrosion science and engineering 2011. It shows that the corrosion has impacts almost in every every sector of the life and in every sector of the materials as it is shown in here like energy and fuels infrastructures it has impacts on the health and safety national security and readiness environment critical infrastructure engineered devices and systems economic security and productivity as well as the national Trigger artifacts. This slide shows the global cost of corrosion. It is taken from the NACE 2016 report. 3.4% global gross domestic product is normally called GDP, equivalent to about US dollar. 2.5 trillion is considered as the cost of corrosion per annum. In one of the references I have seen, this cost has been expanded to, to 4 trillion. How much can we save from this global cost? We call it as a global savings. It's almost in the range of 15 to 35 percent, which is about 375 to 875 billion US dollars. If we apply the available knowledge and technology of a corrosion control and a corrosion protection. The cost of corrosion is on the rise as industry units and disastrous effects of the corrosion. So is the demand of corrosion engineers and corrosion awareness. This slide shows what is corrosion. I have just put four definitions in there from the well-known international organizations like NACE, like Department of Defense of America, 
like uh, International Standard Organization, right, and from the other sources. Uh, and you can see that uh, these uh, four definitions, uh, they have two common factors. One is the materials and other is the environment. And other are diverse in their uh, expression of uh, corrosion and its understandings. As a matter of fact, I have already right, put on the YouTube uh, a video called Definitions of Corrosion and what I have mustered up from the literature, there are about more than 90 definitions of corrosion. So the Corrosion engineer can understand the actual domain of the corrosion and its complications. It is always uh, right, I should know, right, what is corrosion science. So this slide shows uh, the actual uh, definition of corrosion science, uh, which is the study of the interaction of materials with its environment. And the next few slides, they will show actually what the corrosion engineering and what the corrosion technology and what the corrosion technologist. This slide shows uh, what is corrosion engineering. This definition is taken from M.D. from Donna and D. Green, 1978, a book called Corrosion Engineering. According to him, corrosion engineering is the application of science and art to prevent or control corrosion damages economically and safely. This slide shows uh, the Definition of Korean engineering taken from Korianpedia. According to Korianpedia, Korean engineering combines the knowledge of several fields including chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, material science, metallurgy, electronic engineering, and is closely related to the material science and metallurgy and deals with the corrosion of engineering materials as well as construction materials including ceramics concrete, plastics, and other non metals and other type of materials. This slide shows uh, another uh, definition of crew engineering taken from Wikipedia, which uh, narrates uh, career engineering is an engineering specialty that applies scientific, technical, engineering skills, and knowledge of natural laws and physical resources to design and implement materials, structures, devices, system, and procedure to manage corrosion. If you look at these three definitions, you can easily understand that the international community has not so far come up with a consolidated, universally accepted definition of neither corrosion nor the corrosion engineering. As a matter of fact, I have already published on the YouTube, right, a video which has uh, so many definitions of the Korean engineering. If you go through that one, you can grasp more idea about what is Korean engineering. This slide shows what is Korean technology. This slide is taken from this reference as given in there, right? It reads as uh, Corrosion technology is the study of combining chemistry, electricity, physics, metallurgy, and other sciences to prevent and to control corrosion damages. This slide shows what is corrosion technologist according to the European Federation of Corrosion. Corrosion technologies who must collaborate directly with the corrosion scientists and engineers should also have a good understanding of scientific principles and be capable of applying these to practical problems. Usually the young engineers don't understand the subtle differences between the corrosion science, corrosion engineering, and corrosion technology and corrosion technologists. As the corrosion mainly deals uh, 
with the metals. And how many metals are there? This slide shows uh, all these areas uh, which are actually marked uh, red. They are the number of metals in the periodic table. There are almost about 90 plus metals in there. In some cases, it is about 94. And in all these metals, uh, they are found in the nature in the form of ores, right? There's only one metal which is found in, as an element in the nature, and that's gold. And it doesn't mean that the gold does not corrode. Gold also corrodes in the corrosive environments of its own. This slide shows how many minerals and materials cross the entire earth crust. This reference is taken from Minerals and Materials Survey, U.S. Geological Survey 2020. On this survey, there are 90 minerals and materials are exploited for dusty reuse across the global earth crust. This slide shows uh, how many materials uh, the Korean engineer has to deal with uh, in his professional career. First one is the metals. So what's the matter? Metals tend to lose electrons from its outer shell in the atom. Others are the alloys, which are made by mixing the metals together. And there are numerous alloys which are made from these metals for the industrial applications. Then there are collided materials, then there are non-metal, then there are composite materials, then there are aggregates. So the engineer and particularly the growing engineer has to deal with all these materials, right? And it shows that how much is the actual domain of the corrosion in the industrial sector. This slide shows uh, the another sector of uh, a corrosion. Uh, one is the metals or the materials. Uh, other is the environment. This slide is uh, taken from uh, Corrosion Volume 1 by Shrier LL. And this slide shows how many environments in there where the Korean engineer has to deal with along with those factors which are given at the squares at the bottom of the slide, both on the left and right, which indicates the velocity, pressure, temperature, agitation, cavitation, stresses, fatigue, fretting, and heterogeneity of the materials itself. So the corrosion engineer has to deal with all those matters as mentioned earlier, and with the environment, right, to understand and implement the corrosion control to avoid the further disastrous effect of the corrosion in the industry. This slide shows varieties of corrosion and corrosion damages. Varieties of corrosion are given as 57. It is taken from the NACE 1970 book of the basic corrosion and uh, I expect that the corrosion varieties uh, must have increased in the last 50 years. Uh, I'm sorry to say that I don't have uh, the latest figures uh, of the varieties of corrosion uh, right uh, at present. Types of corrosion keep on growing as more materials and environments uh, are developed and encountered. API 571 has uh, identified that there are 66 corrosion damages in the fixed equipment in the refinery. It's only talking about the fixed equipment, not the non-fixed equipment or the rotating machineries like the compressors and the concrete corrosion. So you can imagine there could be many, many more damages if all of them are taken together right as one consolidated record. Growing damages keep on growing as more materials and environments are added right, into the industrial applications. 
This slide shows the properties of material the Korean engineer has to deal in his professional career. These are the physical properties of the materials, mechanical, chemical, electrochemical, thermal, electrical. In material selection, the overriding factor is the economics, which the Korean engineer need to understand and know. What are the economics of the material selection? If you select a material which is economic and not acceptable, right, nobody is going to use that material as a part of industrial application. Another important factor uh, of the material selection uh, and the application of material in the industry is the workable properties of materials, like costability, that it should be able to cost, malleability, ductility, machinability, weldability, solderability. If the material is available right in an ingot form, if it cannot be turned into the plates or into the sheets or made into the actual uh, uh, the pipes, then the material is not going to be acceptable as a part of industrial application. Other thing is that if it is not machinable, then even then material is not acceptable as a part of industrial application. The most important factor is the weldability, that the material should be able to be welded. Otherwise, material will have uh, no applications uh, in the industrial uh, vessels uh, as well as the industrial bigger units and the tanks. Same it too with the solderability. If the material is not solderable, then the material will not have its applications in the electronic industry. Usually, it is considered that the corrosion is bad. No doubt, that is bad. There are a few ugly faces of corrosion which are given in the slides. The one on the left is the corrosion under insulation. The one on the right is the corrosion of copper tubing in desalination plants. This slide shows uh, other ugly faces of corrosion like uh, concrete corrosion and microbiological induced corrosion. They are not the only ugly faces. Wherever there is a corrosion in the industry, they end up in the ugly faces, right? And uh, there are so many examples uh, or of the ugly faces. Uh, even a big atlas is prepared to show the ugly faces of the corrosion. This slide shows uh, the pretty faces of corrosion. So corrosion is not as ugly as always understood. There are so many applications it has which I call them as positive application in my videos uh, earlier uploaded uh, on the YouTube. These actually pictures are taken from there to show to the engineers uh, that the corrosion also have uh, pretty faces. One picture on the left is the electrochemical corrosion where the object has been electrochemically polished in which the corrosion has to occur first before it comes to a smooth surface uh, reflecting light uniformly and look beautiful. Slide on the right is the thermal and sputtering corrosion, means that a metal has to corrode first uh, before it can be deposited on the substrate to give it a beautiful face. This is actually an artificial diamond which is made from the thermal and sputtering uh, corrosion. These are the other examples of the pretty faces of corrosion. One on the left is the electrochemical corrosion as like anodizing, where the metal or the material like aluminum first has to corrode, form an oxide layer on its surface before it is protected or given a different color views. The one on the right is the chemical and electrochemical corrosion deposition, right, we show the chemical electrochemical polishing of the gold in which the gold has to first corrode before it looks shining and becomes chemically or electrochemically polished. In electro deposition is the same, it's the opposite of the electrochemical corrosion where the gold is corroded on an anode and deposited on the cathode where one can make artificial jewelry as beautiful as the real gold. 
This slide shows the career opportunities for the Korean engineers in the industry. I have given in here some very important industries which require the need of the Korean engineer and the input from the Korean engineering. It is the oil and gas industry, chemical and petrochemical industry, Korean diagnostic and research laboratories, construction industry, nuclear industry, transportation and aviation industry, on and offshore transport industry, power and steam generating industry. Next uh, couple of slides shows uh, the career opportunities for a Korean engineer to have its own independent business. Start in electrochemical polishing, chemical polishing, metal finishing, chemical and electrochemical plating, decorative finishing, paper deposition, chemical, electrochemical and mechanical engraving, cathode protection technology, cathode protection surveys, and Korean monitoring. The next slide will add more into the career opportunities for Korean engineers in business. This slide adds more into the career opportunities for a Korean engineer in business like bioassays, mock balling, stray current surveys, painting technology, holiday detection and protective coatings, manufacturing printed circuit boards, recovering silver from used X-ray sheets, recovering gold from used electronics, conversion coatings and electrophoresis. The Korean engineer has to be clever and intelligent with a high degree of talent to have its own business as its career. This slide uh, add uh, further opportunities for a Korean engineer to have his career in business uh, in terms of inspection and testing, uh, ultrasonic testing, magnetic particles, dye penetration, thermography, radiography, eddy current, positive methods identification, field signature methods. Actually, these techniques are not usually taught as a part of a Korean engineering course, may not be even taught as a part of Korean engineering degrees, but the Korean engineer has to learn and take extra courses on the specialized fields to expand its career as a business in Korean engineering or in as an independent business in these testing and inspection techniques. This slide shows uh, the Korean workforce. This slide is taken from uh, the reference given of John R. Scully, 16th International Korean Conference, Beijing. Now this slide shows uh, like the pyramid in terms of the Korean experts, specialists, uh, Korean awareness uh, and the knowledgeable Korean people of, of Korean and how to get is it through the institutions or to the universities or the private organizations or the community colleges and other trade schools, right? You see that on top of it, we have put the Korean scientists, follow the Korean engineers, then other designers and chemical engineers, aeronautical engineer, electrical materials, metallurgical, chemical engineering and design, they follow the actual Korean engineering and so on. It keep on expanding to the lost right uh, section, which is technologist, plant equipment inspectors, maintainer and manufacturers. So the Korean engineer has its own independent field in addition to the ancillary fields and can expand right its career as a workforce in the different type of industries and different type of institutions both academic as well as non-academic now this slide shows the organization governing standards codes and practices on corrosion like institution of corrosion uk National Association of Korean Engineers, Texas, USA, European Federation of Corrosion, Swedish Korean Institute, Macro Society for Testing and Materials, normally called ASTM, 
American Petroleum Institute, Normic called API, Micro Society for Masters, Normic called ASM. This slide is expansion of the last slides, right, showing the organization governing standards, codes, and practices on coercion, like the International Standard Organization, the German Institute called DIN. British standards, uh, European standards, uh, Canadian standards. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are many more standards. Uh, all right, many countries they have their own standards. These standards are given in there uh, to make the Korean engineer understand that when he comes to the industry, right, he may not be needing the academic knowledge. He has taken in there as a part of his degree or courses or special courses. He has to deal with these standards in the industry right before applying his corrosion knowledge in there. This slide is expansion of the last two slides on the organization's governing standard codes and practices on corrosion. Among them, the American Gas Association has their own standard on corrosion. American Society of Mechanical Engineers and Materials Technology Institute, Society for Protective Coating, Steel Tank Institute, Standardization Agency Indonesia. This information is added in there for the brilliant to understand, right, that they have to deal with these standards when they come to the industry and they need to know that where to find these standards and how to access these standards. This slide shows the centers of learning corrosion if the graduate or undergraduate, right, engineer of a different discipline or a beginner wish to learn corrosion, right, he can join one of these institutions and there could be many more in there, right, for learning corrosion. I have given the University of Manchester on top because I'm a product of the University of Manchester and uh, University of Manchester is giving a master degree in coercion. The University of Leeds is giving specialized courses in coercion. University of Surrey is giving specialized courses in coercion. University of Stockholm is giving a master degree in coercion. University of Petronas is giving a master degree in coercion. And MIT is there. University of Oklahoma is there. Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Charles Darwin University, Australia. And next slide is shows more universities uh, who are giving uh, either the Korean courses or Korean degrees. This is extension of the last slides on the Center for the Learning Korean. The University of Akron is giving a BS, uh, a Bachelor Degree of Science in Korean Engineering. University of Queensland, Australia. Curtin University, Australia. Purdue University, USA. Kilgore College USA giving an associate degree in Korean technology. There could be many more universities and institutions are giving a, a degree in corrosion and specialized courses in corrosion, maybe as a major course or a minor course or an elective course. This slide shows the center for learning short and part-time courses on corrosion starting with the most important uh, organization or center, which is very active in giving uh, short and part-time courses on corrosion, that is the NACE, National Association of Korean Engineers, USA. Then the Greenfield University, Norwegian University, University of Manchester, Leeds University, Oklahoma University, Web Korean Clinic, Welding Institute, these is University, some of them are given even are, are giving even uh, online courses, uh, right? And where you can learn uh, in your own place uh, by getting registered with uh, one of the universities, uh, short and part-time courses. This slide is expansion of the last two slides uh, on center for learning a uh, short and part-time courses on corrosion. So one can easily read uh, right from the slides. Uh, where the engineers, they can get short and part-time courses on corrosion. This slide is the expansion of the last three slides. And you can again have these learning centers 
right where you can get extra courses on corrosion this slide shows the business oriented courses for corrosion engineers start with ultrasonic testing dye penetration magnetic particle positive material identification thermography eddy current radiography field signature mapping all these courses may not be given in the university as a part of corrosion engineering but the corrosion engineer after becoming a successful right graduate of corrosion or of any other discipline they can take these highly specialized courses either in the institutions or maybe from the training centers to have understanding of these corrosion and specialized courses so they can apply these courses in the industry and start their own business